Okay, today we're going to talk about sex. Why is it important to keep your virginity again? Then I just think to myself, like, how come? How come nobody wants me? I dated uh, people who were married before. While they were still married. Like, you cannot trust the men that you date as much. Are you... Virgins. Yes. The secret to a successful marriage. Oh. <laughs> so I recently came across an article that says people who engage in premarital sex are two to three times more likely to divorce than those who don't. Right. So uh, she's perfect for today's episode. You'll find out soon. But this is Cheryl. She's one of our account execs. Mm. And she has joined us for a, sh- a year so mm. far. No la. Nine months. Yeah, they're about one pregnancy. So I thought today it would be quite interesting to give a thought to religion and relationships because Amen. I think most of the people who save themselves <laughs> are probably religious. Uh, for it's for religious reasons. Fair, fair, and fair, so fair. Cheryl here, whom we have found out in uncomfortable lunch conversations. <laughs> For her. <laughs> I love this kind of conversations over the last year. It's always super fun. And like, I don't know. It's so fun. Like. Yeah, is it not? No, the type of information you volunteer. <laughs> uh, We've learned lunch, a lot. Right? Is it? Surprising, is it? No, like, yeah. I mean, sure, no, surprising for sure. <laughs> sure. But is it intentional? Or is it just you're just blurting it out? Like, oh. No, it's just whatever that I think. She's a Jess. Okay, which okay, okay. could be different to whatever that you guys think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was also quite active in the Telegram community, if you all don't notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, 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 I always reply to her. <laughs> <laughs> but got a lot of recommendations, also good. That's true. Okay, background context about Cheryl. 30 plus. Yes. Dating for? Uh, one year marriage. plus. Marriage. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. No, it's in dating for marriage. Yes, correct. Okay. Dating for one year plus and pl- hopes to get married with this guy. Eventually. Oh. But also... <laughs> 30 and has saved herself for marriage? Yes. Mm. Wait, yeah, okay, okay. Rare. What, what is it like? Because I think we did an episode a few years back, right? About what it's like to date in your 30s as, or be single in your 30s as a dude, right? But what is it like as a female? There's no difference here. I feel like there's nothing that I'm missing out on besides the sex. No, no, I'm not talking about the sex first. Eh. Yeah. I think oh, the sex okay. you hold off. I'm talking about dating in your 30s versus your 20s as a female mm-hmm. in Singapore. What's the difference? Are you asking you? Don't have. What's the difference for men so that she... Okay. No, like, do, do you not feel like there's a pressure? There's like a yeah. timeline that you're Don't not hitting? Married, yeah, uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. When I was in my 20s, I definitely felt a little bit more pressure to get married. Oh. Um, but it could be my own like circumstances. So I have a younger brother who is now married. And before both of us were married, then my mom will sometimes like, when are you going to get married? Mm. I want to ca- oh. carry grandchildren. Something that my parents can look forward to, they will, I guess they will likely look to him now then look to me la. So I think for both men and women alike, right, I would presume that there is a bit of a stigma because people will think like, eh, how come you are, like nobody want you yeah, all right. the way until 30 plus. Like a left over oh. yeah. Was there ever that vibe? Have la, when I was single la. Yeah, before this boyfriend, then I was single for a long time. Then I just think to myself, like, how come? How come nobody wants me? Or like, how come the guy I don't like, I like, don't like me back? You mm. know, that kind. Which is like, to me, I'm, I'm a puzzled. <laughs> but, but <laughs> how can it be? <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> I'm perfect. <laughs> but we also found out from the, the aforementioned lunchtime conversations yeah. that yeah, her when, standards you, are yeah, when you say that you're single by choice, it's really by choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, y'all might find out more about Cheryl as she continues to appear in our episodes but for now so when you met your partner right at what point do you do you broach the topic of like actually I am saving for marriage Ooh, I think it came out even before we got together oh, oh he already wanted like to on your dating profile <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it's probably Christian. not okay, so, yeah, how, yeah, so how did you meet him on a dating app. <laughs> and within the dating app, it was made clear or like you had to... You no lah. Who puts like, I don't want to have sex on... You yeah, know, no, but on because you, you said that he kind of knew it before dating. Um, before we got together officially, ah, while okay. we were still like... Dating. Yeah, Each other. dating. Yeah. Then it naturally come up in the conversations. Like because how? like, we will talk about Christianity, uh, you mm. know, and expectations and stuff. So then... The, the topic about sex will definitely have come up before la. Right. So, so when the, he... Oh, sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> many questions. <laughs> no, like when he asked like, are you still virgin? Are you like offended? Like, do you know no. I love Jesus? Like that. 
Uh, no, no, no. So like, I, I'm very honest that I'm, yeah, I'm still a virgin. But at the same time, right, I have this like a bit like weird, okay, I don't know, weird thing that I rather my partner not be a virgin. Oh, oh. I was going oh. to ask if you were mm. upset Trusty. that you learned that you he has had virgin. previous partners. Oh. Uh, no, not upset. Why? Why? So you, no, want why you want him to be the experienced yes. expert and show you the way when it's time. Correct. Because right, what if two people who don't know how to have sex, have sex for the first time, then they like lost. But a lot of people like that. What? If both. Then yes, wouldn't la. you date somebody who's been married before so that they got the experience <laughs> of being married? <laughs> I, um, I did a... Uh, people who were married before. Ah, uh, then? They no, were no, very nice were still married. to me. No, no, obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> they were very, very, very nice people. Very but nice does, people. does that logic apply? <laughs> I would consider them though. Oh. I, I'm not like shutting them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can you help? Can you help me understand first? Because I don't really know much about the religion, right? Mm. Why is why is it important to keep your virginity again? Because your body is a temple. But then you want why temple- is it okay only after? Is it because you're only supposed to use it for reproductive purposes and not for pleasure? Uh, there's pleasure in the sex also. That's what uh, the yeah, Bible know, says. But, la. but <laughs> yes, but the purpose of it is reproduction. No, so yeah. So why is it that you can only keep it for after? From the beginning, right? Like the Bible says Adam and Eve is like one and one only. Ma. One mm. guy and one girl. Mm. Mm, mm, so mm. yeah, the Bible never says one guy and like, 10, 20, 30 girls. So it's ideally for life, you only have had that one, one partner. One life like. partner. Yeah. You feel Whoa. like you had to save till marriage because? Uh, religion, uh, yeah. firstly. But from young, I always thought like, hey, it's a gift that I want to give mm. to my partner in future. What a wedding gift. Experience. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the best gifts like are experiences. My body, you know, like... Yeah. <laughs> so the Catholic Church teaches that the only ordered use of sexual facilities is when bo- both their procreative and uni- unitive, unitive natures are f- thank you f- are fulfilled. So essentially, like how it is gluttonous to eat food only to throw it up, using one's body sinfully in favor of pleasure and in contradiction of what it is made for is sinful. Oh. I see. So there we go. Basically, coming with the intention of. Procreation. Procreation. Is it because sex is meant sacredly for procreation, mm. but because God don't want that to be unpleasurable, ma, then nobody want to procreate, right? So he also happened to make it pleasurable. La. I actually learned something in Sunday school, which, oh, catechism, as you call it here in Singapore, because it's too kiddie, you call oh. it Sunday school. Oh, we call Sunday school in our oh, church. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Was that like, I mean, I, I remember being 13 and Sunday, Sunday school teachers like, okay, today we're going to talk about sex and uh, times in which you can do it that is not for reproduction. Oh, so like obviously you can't use contraceptives, right? You can't use condom or what. So okay. the whole I mean is nothing. Is, obviously, it's not like rocket science, but it's just about timing it, lah. So you time it at a point in which pregnancy is very, very low in terms of the probability. The church teaches oh. you that. It was in my Sunday school textbook. <gasps> you have a uh, textbook. What? Yeah, we have a textbook. So you're telling me that Catholic children are taught how to raw dog. <laughs> when to with have least sex. consequences <laughs> like as in if you really bopian like really gotta do it and <laughs> you can't use condoms by right then <laughs> bopian is what time time it <laughs> time it so I mean obviously there's still the, the, the probability and which, which is why I guess it's okay okay um, but wait, also wait, wait, one, can you pull out interesting I that's guess coming cannot, outside eh. of vagina <laughs> make it un- okay yeah, it's a contradiction of what it was made for <laughs> okay but but so, there are some con- um, not contradictions I think, I think like con con what, what's the word contraception confusing exceptions to the oh, rule. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay so like um, why, why, why does Christianity not allow contraception because it's not what it was so when you have you're having sex, sex for pleasure yes. right? and it's not for reproduction no and you're killing it just that's true. The life. So I was an I was an altar boy, and <laughs> I actually was quite close to several priests. Not like that. Okay, it was a very not like what. Altar boy. Not like what. I don't teaching understand. you how to have sex without. <laughs> it wasn't the priests that were teaching you. It was other parents who volunteered to be Sunday school teachers. Right. <laughs> but I, it was all an above board job. Anyway, like like there, there are several priests that are close to my family, and so like, I remember being in Australia to study there, okay, and they so happened to be visiting. And so my parents just like, hey. Like father so and so are uh, going to be there. Like, I think you should have lunch. And I was like, sure oh. Like I used to be friendly with them. Mm-hmm. So then I asked them like, what what are the exceptions when it comes to like contraception? Because I was really intrigued. Like, how can the the Catholic Church not allow for it when there are certainly countries where AIDS is like prominent and you're not going to allow them to use condoms? And then they actually said there are 
exceptions to the rule. So like if they actually go on missions <laughs> and to visit these countries, right? They actually, have sex. They they actually condoms. hand out condoms because it is completely unethical for them to say, don't use condoms and the whole population dies from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. So okay. like, I thought I thought that was pretty interesting that obviously there is, like Catholics are always known for being very strict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your approach to your virginity and all this kind of stuff and sex when, when, it, when and how it- Before I moved to Singapore, like, when I was 14, 15, but I was insistent that I, I I was gonna save for marriage, and to me that was the only way. There was no other exception. So like when I went to school and I found out that like my classmates at thirteen were like engaging in sexual activities. Wow! I was like shocked. I was like appalled. Are you all like, going to hell? Not not going to hell, but can man. Oh, like okay. allowed, biologically like can your parents allow you to. Oh. You know? Like to me, it's just like it, it, Where I cannot. Is this happening? Yeah, and then when I moved to Singapore, which I believe in that comparison, kids were way more liberal about sex, and I found out that it what? wasn't just happening in terms of sexual activities, like whether it was like mutual masturbations or whatever, right? But it was actually sex, sex that was happening, penetrative sex. <laughs> like At such a young age. Yeah, at like 13, 14, like my classmates wow. were all going like, hey, party later, uh, like make sure you got like private rooms or what, so that you can bring your girlfriends in and like have sex and what. Now I was just like, what school are you goes, you yeah? International, <laughs> international. me? Yeah, cause like my friends were like, hey, you got the condoms and all. And then like, wow. Huh? You, you're not saving for marriage. Where are they getting the condoms at 13? So how did that change? <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't have sex until I was like in my twenties, la. Like, like uh. I really did. Maybe not by choice or so, but like <laughs> I did. Like wait in the end, like I didn't do it in secondary school. Like all my friends did, and to some extent, I think it went from yo, how come you all like that to like, am I missing out? And I felt like ah, I am missing out, and I'm missing out on like something. But I was, I don't know, like I don't know. There's just a part of me that just couldn't break that mental barrier. When you were deciding to finally have sex, right? Mm. Did you feel like guilty towards your religion? You know what I mean? I don't think it was guilt towards the religion, but it was more of like, okay, if the religion is teaching me this, it has to have some perks. Ma. It has to, there must be a reason behind it. Now that I'm deciding to engage in sexual activity, am I missing the lesson here? Am I missing the pros that I don't see just because I feel like I'm FOMO mm -hmm. from sex? I think I also had a friend ask me, um, this was before she converted. So then she would always ask like, why would you like worship a God or want to follow a God that is so restrictive? I think I always grew up grew up knowing that like Christianity is going to be a like very narrow path to walk. It's going to be a very difficult path to walk because of all the like rules and, and, and things that we cannot do or restrictions and all that. But uh, God never say like, I'm going to leave you to like walk this path by yourself. What? You know, he always has that grace like that is given to us. And he said that he will promise that he will walk with us through, through all this. So like I always held on to... To that la. Have you ever had boyfriends that were not understanding of you wanting to save for marriage? Don't have. But also no. because you chose people who, Correct. like guys who were Christian. Yes. Okay, okay. But I did date, I, I never got together in the end, but I did date guys who wanted to have sex. Like just oh. maybe like five dates in. Then but they like wanna... how, how do they even like broach that topic? Wait, but you tell them at the beginning already la, no la. Yeah. Then yeah. they still try, five try. days they in. They try to kiss. They try to like, Oh, you know, like I'm going to be the one that will convince her kind of thing. Maybe. Wait, maybe kiss? they think very big of no, themselves. No, so from like, making out to yeah. like, you know. Oh, yeah. The hand suddenly wander in places yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah. Maybe, I see, yeah. I see, I see. Oh, so then how? Then, then from there is... No, so out. so eventually they kind of like lose interest. Lo. Right. Oh. Then, then I don't hear from them anymore. So do you think that because of your decision, right? Men, how to say, like you cannot trust the men that you date as much. Because there is the ulterior motive of like- All men want to have sex. Have sex. Oh. No, because you are a virgin and okay, I don't know, maybe the men can say. When we interviewed Ashley, right? The, sure. She was saying that because people have, like men have seen her already. Mm -hmm. So then it's actually not so stressful because she 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 feels like- Do you know what to expect? They are more clear and upfront about what they want. Mm -hmm. Whether it's just just to, 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 to have sex or if they actually want a relationship. I'm wondering if men feel like like ego based, they want to be the one that changes. She conquers. You know? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. That's Conquest. why after they realize that she's not interested in that, right? Then, then they, they give up. Yeah, or they feel shit by themselves because they are not the conqueror that they thought they were. Mm. <laughs> no, but I remember like Good Christianity reasons. being like yeah. strict, being being a thing. Because I remember there were points in my life where I go. Sure, born being born Buddhist or like very free. More or, fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, Not okay, so many rules. <laughs> I, I used to think about this also. Like when you are religious means you believe in a God. That means this fella that you talk to and all that kind of thing, he's like kind of there, right? Then when you have sex, right? You don't feel like, because he's like omnipresent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like, do you mean? Yeah. Do you mean that like, you feel oh like God, he's watching you? Yes. <laughs> also scary. Then he's looking at you. Hello, Dan. Like no privacy. No. Yeah. How about your your Harder. journey? What was your, your journey? <laughs> I don't know. Like, what's your journey with religion? Because I was born into a Christian family. I went to a Catholic school for ten years. St. Um, Gabe's. I kind of get it, <laughs> but my only real attempt at Christianity was when I was like towards the end of secondary school, entering poly. And mm-hmm. I think for those few years, it was me actually trying to attempt like believing. But there was a lot of, I met with a lot of frustration because I cannot feel anything. Mm-hmm. I don't sense anything. I don't hear anything. Mm. Wait, it's the sex or the religious? Sorry. <laughs> 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 what are you, yeah. you say what? Religion is restraining, right? <laughs> Maybe I like to be restrained. <laughs> <laughs> no, la, religious but, are being submissive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lo. Then like, I keep asking, 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 but then I cannot get an answer. So after some point, I just gave up. Uh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you dated uh, girls who wanted to say for marriage? Oh, Is it a turn off for you? No, I wanted to say for marriage. Oh. oh. Like, because I told you I was, I grew up in that kind of household, right? So no, in my head, that's, that's all I knew. I, I think when I, when I gave up on religion, right? It was like, I was like learning how to swim again. Okay, no, maybe this is not good energy. <laughs> it's like, no, I was learning how to walk again. Like, I don't know like what this live. landscape is and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Like previously, life is based on these rules. rules yeah. But suddenly, eh? No lah, these rules no longer apply to me already. Then what is life? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Then, then you begin to make friends with different people from different walks of life. I, I think when you are in religion, you are surrounded by a lot of people who follow the same beliefs. Especially when you're younger lah. That's mostly the people they are closest to. I feel like it does influence you quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But when you get older, you really meet people from all walks of life, different religions, that kind of thing. Then you mm. begin to understand and view things differently. You even view re- your own religion differently also. Yeah. But I've never gone back to it. Eh. I've never gone back to, to, to religion at the moment. Like, I feel like I don't really need it. No, but at what point yeah. did you like go from saving for marriage until not? Was it because the religion no longer was part of your life? Yeah. I, mm. I think the moment that it wasn't really a very strong thing for me. Right. But when when I decided to just leave religion, right? right, right. Everything left with me, including that. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. How about you, Shams? As a Christian that has sex. <laughs> no, I, I'm not red. Because I'm not super religious. Okay, the very first time when I had when I had sex for the first time, right? You know when you struggle to say the word. No, because he talked about God being omnipresent, right? I felt immediately guilty at that yeah, time. Because yeah. oh. I feel like God is watching me and that this is a big no no. Mm. What am I doing? Right. During so, or after? During and after. Oh <laughs> no. Yeah, I felt guilty. But uh, I was so young. La, so um, After a while, the, the guilt like yeah, goes away. It, la. Yeah. It, guilty it goes pleasure, like, that's what yeah. they call it. No, I had a brother president like, that actually gave a really good energy. It's like a katana. Like, no, sorry. It's like a, what you call the the the, 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 the sh- Yeah, it's like a shuriken. <laughs> and the shuriken is spinning and it's very sharp. But after yeah. a while, it will become blunt and you won't feel it anymore. What? And that's, that's how it feels oh like. My. But my story is just su- just quite short, I think. Not but no good. shuriken, okay? Yeah, no shuriken. <laughs> it's just like that. Lo. I just felt very like, oh shit. After a while, like what you said, it feels l- less and less guilty. Do you feel like your relationship with the Lord has been compromised in a sense? I, I think at that time, I drifted from God because... I felt so guilty, right? I didn't want to talk to him. Or I didn't want to. Because I I feel like he- The shame. Yeah, the shame. Would you date someone who says they want to save for marriage? Is that a deal breaker for you? To some it is, eh. In your experience? Yeah, yeah. Those that she did. The young one is that. Is it a deal breaker for you all also? I don't know eh. I, I, I cannot answer. I don't know. For her, it's a deal breaker if they don't want to say for sure. Ma. Like, but they no, need no, to no. have at least two oh, body huh? counts. No, as in like- No, like right now, your partner want to have sex. Oh. That is a deal breaker. No lah, it's not a deal breaker lah, but I will oh. stand my ground. Oh, they also stand No, yeah, that means also broken lah, no sex. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, it's still no sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they can <laughs> want it. <laughs> no compromise lah. <laughs> they can want it. You just cannot have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have a question. You can yeah. even like do, in just no penetration lah, but you can do other Everything sexual activities. Else. I don't know eh. I, can I don't touch backside. With clothes on? Uh, with clothes. I guess like, you know, like just... For fun, uh, for fun. Uh, uh, okay. So, so <laughs> absolutely no basis, like usually. No yes, yeah. yeah, so uh, nothing, just nothing. Okay, I, I'm not too sure about that, but personally, I'm not interested. Oh. I don't have that like physical desire to have intimacy. Mm. Yeah, you, so wait, then what makes that. you think that yeah. after you get married, the desire will come? Yeah. Don't Sorry. know. <laughs> Maybe if uh, my partner gets 
hotter. <laughs> Reaper, you know what I mean? What are you talking about? Whoa! Can you explain? Wait, so you just said that... She cannot. You're, you're implying she, she that not, your, your partner is not... Don't dig her a hole on her first episode. No we'll pass you a letter after. <laughs> I'll save uh, you first by like basically saying because the question was pointed to us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's a deal breaker if if I I was single and my partner or like I was still dating and my partner wanted to save. But if we can do other stuff lah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, 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 so I asked yeah, yeah. her the question. So yeah, if you can do other stuff, still okay. But I'm then okay. that just sounds like you're trying to work around this rule rather than respect it. You know what I mean? I understand, I understand. Yeah, yeah but I think- But come on my face with my using my hands, but no sex ah. <laughs> that's not bad, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Please because, don't. Because I, I, I really think it's the best of both worlds where like, there, there comes to a point where you obviously want to love somebody to a point where intimacy is like a, a, a added bonus. It's not the main thing, but it's an added thing. Mm. And what you have is the best of both worlds where there's still that tease of like not getting the final product essentially, but you still enjoy the Edging path to it, the, the, the oh. cookie crumbs. But then like, where where do you draw the line, right? So my worry is like, you maybe make out or whatever, but then like, maybe you cannot have self, you don't have enough self-control. Then how far will you go? So, right. so for me, right, I will stop where like, it gets like too intense or I feel like I cannot like have any more self-control. Okay. So, so you guys can make out or kiss like, Yeah, can kiss her, yeah. And that's probably the, where the line is lah. Mm, hugs, kisses, I mm, yeah, I guess so, cuddling. Should you or would you date someone who is non-religious? So the Bible says don't, right? Don't the get The Bible together. says don't? Huh? Yeah, don't Ex- be- Explicitly? Don't be like unequally yoked but, uh, with somebody- Up to yoked. Inter- <laughs> <laughs> But the yoke Wait. is up to interpretation. I mean, yes, yes. So so the struggle, right? Or like the, the bit of contention. Okay. The worry is like, if you date somebody who is a non-Christian- Or differently yoked. Or yeah, or, or, mm. yeah lah. Then, <laughs> then you might- eventually struggle with your own faith. Uh, Wait, what is yoke? <laughs> How faithful you are, the level of faith. This has nothing to do with your virginity. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, I, I thought yoke means your, also, a yoke have your like eggs been scrambled, you know what I'm no, saying? No, no, no. Y-O-K-E. Have you scrambled some Without the L, no L. Y-O-K-E. Ah. Yoke. Oh, yoke. Ah. So oh, last time, right, the like farmer, when they need to plow the fields, right, then they have this like oxen that will pull the cart. So then they usually, they will pair two, two. oxen together. But yes. if one person is pulling, pushing at a different yeah. rate, then they are unevenly yoked. So the yoke is the thing that they pull. Yeah. I so see. So unevenly yoked, so then it's uh, the relationship is like unbalanced. Exactly or wouldn't work out. Doesn't plow well. I understand. How deep and plowed you are in religion. But she's not looking for this no. lah. She's looking more for like a front back tandem bike type situation lah. In no, terms of the, the guy got no, experience no. So <laughs> Oh no, but actually, actually is the same. Oh, for, oh okay, okay. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. So actually, they tend to pair an older ox and a younger ox together so oh. that they can... No, so Why? To pace. So, no, so that the somebody got the experience pa. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. not oh. two young ox, they don't know how to plow. You need a pacer. So it comes back to the sex. Let's fact check. Editor, please fact check this. Do you think like sexual chemistry is something that can be nurtured I have no idea. Yeah. I hope yes. so. I, I think, think so. so eh. Like, so that means that like, even though you're stuck at different levels and all this kind of thing, like talk about like libido and all this kind of thing, right? Like, do you think that there's like, you can actually work to get to a point where both are like, extremely satisfied? 100%. And, and and in a way that's not, like a, in well, a way that's not mechanical. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because like, at the end of the day, it, it's very akin to understanding your, your partner's love language. You both, you both will have different love languages, but you have to optimize how you operate and they operate. So like, for example, um, net is like high on acts of service, mine is the lowest. Then I need to definitely like bring that up. Okay, but when it comes to sex, it's the same. Like, there, there'll be certain things that she likes that maybe I'm like not so comfortable or familiar with that I need to like then operate. But once it gets to a point where like you see yourself sit, uh, this is what I'm saying. If you, you love her, her, you want to exactly, do it. Exactly. And you see yeah. the reaction being positive. <laughs> 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 then you also feel good. Like I think there is a, like I feel more turned on by seeing her Does reaction it, like, and positive feedback a, yeah. than mm. anything that, yeah. That's just because you're a people pleaser. I think so. And it works <laughs> in the bedroom too. No, but how can you not? Be a people pleaser in bed. You'll be yeah. shocked. So many men, according to this study, also, a 2018 study, sorry, 43% of husbands overestimate how often their wives achieved orgasm. <laughs> Is it because they faked it? Or? No, yeah. no, because they think... <laughs> Because they, these guys, oh. they think that they did it, but no, because the husband's well perception la. is directly correlated to how much they are enjoying it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Are you worried that after you get married, right? What if you still don't have this sexual yes. desire or attraction? Always. 
I, oh, I, I, I worry have about you that. Spoken la. to your partner about this? No, haven't. But like it is a, a worry to me, eh? Because like what if I don't enjoy sex, eh? Oh. But it's after marriage already. Then how? Then what if my partner has a higher sex drive than me? Then why I feel like when I'm having sex, I'm actually not enjoying it, but I'm just like satisfying him. Right. Yeah. Mm. Do you think that this is something that, or have you talked about this to your partner already? Sex ah? Yeah lah. No, like, like in, that, in that situation where let's say you really like, you try already, no, you don't think sex is... is for is, you. Yeah. Mm, I think eventually we'll probably have to, at that point, we'll have to talk about it like, and come to like some sort of compromise because like, I, I guess I also understand that guys also have needs. So what are you open to? Like for example, if you say you are not going to do anything, but he can go and play Masturbate. around. No, can he like... No, uh, go and like... Or find services. other people. Uh. Uh, uh, uh. Like transactional. Purely transactional. Then no they completely defeat either. the purpose of the marriage. intention of saving for marriage yeah, and marriage. Yeah. So it's a prison lah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she means the compromise as like maybe like once How a month then they times? do. No, or have you asked yeah, yeah. whether he's okay with not having sex in like, ever? Yeah. 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 Because for some people, maybe sex doesn't matter in a relationship. Yeah. Mm. But if that is like a hundred percent no, uh, mm. that means no matter what he needs, right? Then that's a slightly different conversation you need to yeah, have with right. you, right? I think for me now, like I'm more optimistic. So for for like currently, I'm like not interested, right? Yeah. But I'm hoping that I will learn to like like it in future. It, it could be that you have cycled mm. yourself so much to save that you have mind into not wanting it or like be uninterested Probably. and maybe after marriage you can unlock maybe that. it changes yeah. yeah no I'm just like so so you're okay with him masturbating I think you mentioned masturbate like, like because he for you, now lah because yeah, like dating. you have to like figure out your <laughs> your own needs yes, <laughs> your yes, own yes. needs understandable yeah. so that's okay <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I'm okay. No, it was quite interesting because the moment I realized she was saving for marriage, I think like I'll, we were talking about like what is the f good frequency for sex. Yeah, yeah. Then uh. one of our colleagues like uh, reviewed that he only has it <laughs> once a week, and then she say, only once, only, only. Then <laughs> the colleague a bit hurt lah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Then he said sometimes twice lah. <laughs> huh? Only twice. <laughs> And no, then because, she realized that she said, right, is it not every day? Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought like, that before that conversation, conversation, I really thought that like couples generally mostly have sex every day. Except oh. when you're trying for a kid, then that's every other day. Correct, because you need the sperm quality to oh, be. Oh, that's so funny <laughs> that you thought that. But is yeah. it because like your social circle is also all saving for marriage so you guys don't oh. really know? I guess we've never had that conversation. Right. In, in my social circle, like in church, right? Uh, the, the way that we talk about it or communicate about it before marriage, like if let's say you're going to get married, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, and I'm a married person, I will give you a book about sex. Oh, you're oh, so cute. Oh, what, is in, what, is in yeah, what is in the book? I don't know. I never read it before. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Because it cannot be given to you yet. Okay, 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 oh okay, 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 okay. <laughs> No, but I'm sure like in couple counseling or whatever, they would have spoken about yeah. it. Can I ask, right? Do you think that, so I would presume that because for the both of you all, right? Even with the intention of saving for marriage, when your friends and all this started talking about it, that's when you started getting curious, you go and research, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. having been raised in an environment where you just don't really talk about it, mm -hmm. and then now, at your workplace <laughs> of all places, <laughs> yeah. like talking about this a lot more, right? Does that, do you feel like that tempts you more? Ooh. Not really, but I'm very, maybe that's why I'm like so interested in the conversations at lunchtime. Oh, right. because... Because I'm the learning that you don't know. Yeah, I'm like, learning so much yeah. eh, in all our lunchtime conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, people are going to think what we're up. talking about at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time for painting, painting of, of the episode. episode. Jared, please. Yep. Thank you very much. So as you know, the Daily Catch-Up is collaborating with Shaping Hearts. Jared will tell you more about this piece. Yes, so this piece is by <laughs> Mr. Ang Ming Kiet and it's called Autumn Tree Lighthouse. So Ming Kiet, has cerebral palsy, which makes it hard for him to uh, keep his hands steady. So he actually specializes in stencil art. And so he's created this very nice- This is stencil. This is stencil, wow. yeah. And it portrays autumnal trees alongside a lighthouse, capturing the essence of transition and guidance. You, yes. the, the range of artworks that I've been seeing <laughs> yeah, right. I really quite blow my mind. So thank you for watching today's episode. Like, share, subscribe. Let us know if you want to see more of Cheryl. Thank you for joining us and being very open. Thank you, Cheryl. With us. Yeah. But not her boyfriend for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>
So one, one thing that was very interesting was that uh, Denise asked everybody at lunch, like, if you could be, if you could spend a day in the shoes of somebody, what who would it be? <laughs> and all of us like chose, like, I mean, like historical figures and all this. I did, and, I did also. And no, Cheryl, <laughs> being uh, the probably the most Christian girl in the office, said porn star. Eh, no, <laughs> my, my first <laughs> <laughs> porn star. Porn that's porn star. Star. <laughs> no, the follow up, the explanation was even more <laughs> shocking. <laughs> then I asked her, what if, right, after trying sex as a porn star, and then you realize, oh my God, I love sex. Then you go back to your original life and you're like, now what? Then she said, at least I know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> at least I know how to get there. <laughs> Wait, what was your reason? Huh? For what? For being to be a porn star for a day. Because uh, I... Who... When else can you get that opportunity? Being <laughs> any opportunity <laughs> what? To be anybody else. When else can I be like on you? What do exactly. You mean? No, but a porn star, you, like, you chose a porn star just because this is a person <laughs> who is exposed to sex. But yeah. anybody else, maybe outside of the religious community, will also be experiencing sex. Okay, right? but yeah, is but that person... day the day that they're having sex? Yeah, yeah like, imagine <laughs> it's a non-filming day. <laughs> Out of the week. <laughs> yeah, or the day they're filming the acting scenes. Oh, but you see higher chance scene. for a porn star to have sex than... Then regular one pe- once a week. Or oh, a prostitute. <laughs> ah. No, but then <laughs> you see. Ah, Immediately. The I porn guess. star, likely, if, if that person is a very successful porn star, likely the figure very good, got boobs, la, got butt. La, so you're thinking pretty, of the la. figure. Must be also. everything, but all encompassing.